you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. What is going on guys, Brahma18 here, back again with another episode of this AC Milan Career Road Series on FIFA 20. Thank you for joining me today. It is a massive episode in store ahead of us. We have big games, we have transfer deadline day, uh, we have a semi-final against Lazio, the first leg, and also the knockout stage uh, of a Champions League against Liverpool. So, big games ahead of us today and so much to get through. I'm imagining this is going to be quite a long episode, so, uh, you know, get yourself strapped in, as they would say. Um, anyway, so first off, we're going to assume this game against Benevento, and then we'll head straight into deadline day, and I can sort of show you what's been going on uh, behind the scenes, really. These are on a quite a poor losing streak, actually, so we would expect to beat these, and we do 3-0 in the end, but unfortunately, it isn't without casualties. Mattia Caldara does come down with an injury, and we're hoping that's not long-term. Uh, looking at that eight weeks, wow, that is pretty poor. That is pretty poor indeed. Um, just thinking of it. Thankfully, we do have Varnia uh, to come in. Uh, but do we need do we need another one? That's the question. Or does someone slot in for eight weeks? I mean, for eight weeks, you can't sign another player. So someone's just going to have to slot in um, every so often. Uh, which is a bit disappointing with a broken collarbone. But there we go. But we get the win. That's the most important thing. And it does mean we retain our lead at the top of the table ahead of Napoli. Looks like Inter Milan have actually bottled it. Um, so uh, that's pretty big as well. So we're coming into deadline day. Um, and there's quite a lot been going on behind the scenes. I asked a lot of you to uh, get at me in the comment section in the previous video regarding, you know, suggestions for transfers. We were looking at Alejandro Gomez. Um, we were thinking of maybe Rakitic as well. Pellegri, Fernandez, who's been on my radar for a while now. And you guys sort of came at me with quite a few suggestions back. I mean, Donny van der Beek was one, uh, along with Madders. Uh, those two were just head and shoulders the most suggested for... Um, who was another one? Hakim Ziyech got quite a few suggestions as well. Uh, for any of you who watched my Ajax series last year, you know I've got a soft spot for Donny van der Beek. Uh, so I really do like that suggestion. Of course, we did sell Paqueta for 70 million, so we needed someone to replace that role. Um, and he's 23, so he fits into our um, sort of philosophy of signing young players. He can still grow, he can still improve. So I do really like that signing. Um, and I think that's one we could very well make. He's got a release clause of 35 million. Um, so I'm very much considering that one. Another one who came up was Marco Verratti. He also got a couple of hits as well. Um, now, I also like that signing, but the thing is, we wouldn't be able to sign him now because his contract is running out. But that means we can get him for free, but just get him at the end of the season. So that's another one we're probably going to look into as well. Signing for around about 170,000 per week, maybe 200,000, which is something I don't like as much. But as people like to keep pointing out to me, um, we've made quite a lot of money. As you can see, 422 million profit this year, if I can get onto it. 422 million profit this year, 270 million at transfer budget. Um, in this transfer window alone, we've sold over 150 million's worth of players, just three of them. So we're we're quite good for money compared to Milan in real life. When we first started this series, we uh, had sort of we were trying to keep it realistic, and we knew we had financial fair play problems. Well, we don't anymore, that's for sure. So um, we're looking quite good. So I feel a bit better about paying Verratti that sort of money. Um, and elsewhere, we of course do have a slight winger issue. We've only really got three who can play on the wing. Rebic is more of a makeshift left winger. Um, so we've been thinking about that winger position as well. I was trying to look at Italian players because, of course, you know I'm, I'm you know I'm quite big in in this series of trying to get homegrown players. Um, and you know we're sort of struggling to be honest. We already have the best Italian winger. You know, by some mile in Federico Chiesa. Like, he is the highest rated Italian winger on this game right now at 84. Um, no Bernadeschis, no Politanos. He is the man. So, you know, we're sort of downgrading either way. So, um, El Shirawi was one. You know, and I, I like El Shirawi. He did used to play for AC Milan as well, so he would sort of be bringing him back home. Um, but the thing is, he is 
sort of, um, well, I mean, he's 28 years old. It's not a problem. I'm fine with signing people more experienced. Uh, but I, I don't know if that's the one we, the route we want to go. One I did sort of identify was Inyaki Williams. Uh, he's moved to Toledo on this. He's originally at Athletic Bilbao. Yes, his predominant position is a strike on this, but he is without doubt a winger. Uh, he's played in the wing uh, throughout the predominant um, phases of his career at Bilbao. Um, he's got high, high work rate as well. Um, so, you know, we could stick him on the left. He can cut in on his right foot. And what might surprise you the most to see is that if we have a look at the... Where am I going to go to find this? We'll go into the player stats. If you have a look at the top scorers, he's actually third on the list for Torino. So, he's having a really good season. Currently on 13 goals in 21. So, um, you know, that just appeals me to him even more. So, he's another one we're considering as well. So, you know, I'm just having a think about it. I'm just having a think. But first off, what we are going to do is we're going to sign Van der Beek. And that's it. We're going to pay his release clause of £35 million And we'll skip straight into negotiations and see what we can do. Um, of course, we do try and offer realistic prices here, realistic wages and realistic transfer fees as well. So let's see how it goes. First off, he does want Crucial, and we can give him that. He will slot into that role. And a five-year deal as well for a young player is um, very acceptable. Thankfully, he doesn't want a release clause, so we'll take that all day long. And in terms of the wages, he wants 53000 per week. All we'll do is we'll remove the bonus, and we'll submit that offer and see what he thinks of that. He wants to upgrade it to 62000 I'll haggle a little bit for the sake of um, habit. I'll go to 54,000, see what he thinks of that. Um, it looks like he isn't going to accept anything less than 62, so we will just offer him that. And I am uh, very at peace with that signing. 35 million for Van der Beek is a wonderful, wonderful price, in my opinion. And he is a top class player. Nice little soft spot for him. So he'll slot nicely into that Paqueta role. We've sold Paqueta for uh, 70 million and we've signed him for 35. So I'll take that all day long. Halved our, um, our expenditure, doubled our profit for a better player. Uh, maybe not ratings-wise, but better in real life, that's for sure. So, very, very pleased with that. Welcome back, guys. This is a turn of events I didn't see coming. Turns out Dortmund have actually offered £41 million for Sandro Tonali. Um, now, I'm not really looking to sell him, but if they offer us a ridiculous price... Um, I'm not sure I can say no. Maybe we negotiate and ask for 70. And if they offer us 70, I'll accept it. But if they're, you know, refusing to offer anywhere near that, then, um, you know, I'm happy to reject it because he is really a part of our, the core of our side. So we'll ask for 70. I'm expecting them to flat out reject this, to be honest. Um, and I'm half hoping they do. Um, no, it says, turns out they only want to off of 41. I don't think this one's going to happen, thankfully. Uh, like I say, I don't really want to sell him, but you can't really turn down 70 million for him, can you? Uh, no, this isn't going to happen, so we are going to reject that, um, and he will remain at the club. Right, so I've decided I am going to make the plunge for Inyaki Williams. He's going to cost us maybe 40, maybe 50 million, um, and I'm going to pay. I am going to pay. I don't like paying these sort of fees, but um, you know, you have got to do what we got to do, and we are thin at the winger position. But not only that, he's just a terrific player quite clearly 85 rated and he's going to offer us what we need so we'll start off with offering his base value uh, 41.5 million and we'll see what they think of that so they're asking for 69 i'm not paying anywhere near that uh, we're going to lower that and we're going to go 48 million um, and see uh what the response is to that they're still asking for 69 which i don't like we're going to lower this down again and we're going to go 52 that's round about my limit. I'm really not looking to pay 60 plus, to be honest with you. So we'll see, it says we're going to take time and think about it. So we'll wait and see what their response is, but that is going to be uh, quite an intense wait over deadline day. Right, so we are back, everyone. So they have counted offer us, counter offered us, excuse me, 56.5 million. Um, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to accept. I don't like paying these sort of big fees, but you got to do what you got to do. So 56.5 million is going to go straight into the first team, that's for sure. I ain't plonking this geezer on the bench if we're paying that sort of fee for him. So crucial first team player into the negotiations now. We're going to offer him a five-year deal. 
and uh, he should accept that he does uh, we're gonna deny a release clause as well so he wants 60,000 per week but importantly he wants 3.4 million for 25 goals i'm not paying that sort of bonus so we're gonna remove that submit and see what he thinks he now asks for 76 million we'll lower that down to something like 60 64 uh, and I'm presuming he's going to want more, to be honest. Yeah, he's still going to ask for 76,000 uh, per week. So we are going to accept that. And the deal is done. So two big signings. We've paid about, what, 80, 90 million worth, pounds worth of signings on deadline day. That is a, a very big splash out. So we're expecting a very big return. But nevertheless, two uh, quality players. Look at that. Very, very pleased with our business. And um, hopefully uh, that's what it takes now for us to not only win the title, but get a couple more trophies and so with that in mind deadline day will come to a close very pleased as i've said very pleased with how it's gone um, and we can move into the rest of the season now with um a very healthy looking um first team might be lacking squad depth for a little bit although not too much to be honest i'm actually very pleased donny van der Beek actually goes up a rating um since deadline day which is very pleasing to see we've actually got an 85 rated player now um, so, absolutely delighted with the business we've done. Hopefully, we can move into the games now with, um, with a bit of momentum from this. Here's another update for you all. We was scouting in Romania and we have had our youth uh, squad monthly report. Um, and I've identified this man, Alexandru Stan. He's ready for a promotion to the first team. As you can see, potential 88 to 94, 17 years old now. Um, so, I think he's ready to go. So, we're going to promote him. And hopefully, we've got a, um, a gem there. But we will, of course, look at the work rates and also the likes of the skill moves and the weak foot as well. If it's a massive letdown, then um, you know we'll have to sort of turn our attentions elsewhere. So let's have a look at him. It is a massive letdown. One-star skill moves, medium-low work rate. Uh, that is horrendous. So we won't be giving him any opportunities and we'll probably look to loan him out ASAP. Um, so that is very, very disappointing. So today we have the Atalanta game. We are going to sim this one because of the big games we've got ahead in the episode. This is the team we're going with, going for a three at the back, the three five two or the three four one two, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're not playing Inaki Williams or Van der Beek because I'm going to save their debut for when we actually play a game for entertainment purposes. So um, that's the risk we're going to take. Um, hopefully we can get the win. It's a very tough game against Atalanta. We did beat them recently. And we've done the double over them. 2-1 in the end. Kessier and Haaland on the score sheet. Muriel did put them ahead in the second minute. But we do enough to get the win. So it's a very important win for us. And it keeps us four points clear at the top. Next up is Empoli at home. Again, we're simulating this game. We can retain our lead at the top of the table. Go up to four points. So hopefully we can go again. It is the same formation and it is a similar result. Benesser gets two. Leao gets one. Unfortunately, Calabria does get sent off, meaning he will be out for the next game. But um, most importantly, we've got another three points on the board. So it's finally time to play some games in. I can stop rambling all the time. Um, so it's the first leg of the semi-finals in the Coppa Italia uh, against Lazio. This is the formation we're going. Finally, Van der Beek and Williams have both been kicking off to me about how they're not playing, even though it's only been three games. Um, so finally, they'll get their game time. 4-3-3. Um, three, three. Other than that, fairly standard lineup. Unfortunately, Callion does have to drop to the bench with Williams coming in, but uh, we'll make plenty of room for him elsewhere. Other than that, of course, Calabria serving his suspension, so Conti will come in. Apart from that, it's time to go. Oh, well done, Kessie. He's on hand there. Chiesa now. Looks for Van der Beek. Great run. Van der Beek slips the Lazio defender into good save. Only as far as Chiesa, though. Goes to goal. Lovely finish. 1-0 inside eight minutes. Federico Chiesa is the man on the score sheet. It's calm. And it's a great start for Milan. Been in full control already. And um, Lazio just didn't have an answer. Van der Beek's unlucky with the first attempt. It's a terrible pass out. Not sure who it is, but it goes straight to Chiesa. And he only has to take a touch to set himself or two um, before slotting it into that bottom right-hand corner. And the keeper just isn't going to reach that one. 1-0 one to AC Milan early in the first leg. Haaland. Oh, through to Kessier. It's a lovely ball. Can he make it too? He can. Frank Kessier loves to get on the score sheet. And he's done it once again. 38 minutes gone. 
It's a nice build-up play and it's what we deserved. We've been in control of the game. Kessier. Now this is an opportunity. Donny van der Beek. Chiesa's over on the other side. He's going to whip it to him. It's... Oh, my word. Ah, put too much power onto that ball. I should have just threaded it across. I tried to drive it instead. Chiesa's forced into heading it. He's got no other alternative. And again, he probably still should probably hit the target, but it goes wide. Right, well, full time then. 2-0 in the end. It's a good, solid win. It could have been more. And it probably should have been more, but it's a solid win and a clean sheet. Um, and most importantly, you know, we put ourselves in a, in a great position heading into the um, uh, second leg. So we can't be um, disappointed with that at all. A good performance and hopefully we can take that into the next league game, which is against, surprise, surprise, Lazio. So we're about to begin that second game against Lazio. Uh, we're sticking with the same formation, but there are a few changes, as you can see. The reason being is that, of course, we do have Liverpool in two days' time, um, and I'm trying to keep things fresh and hope that the squad is ready for that. I've already got a team in mind for that game, but we'll come on to that when the game comes. So there are some changes. Varnia does, of course, come in for Thiago Silva. Mandragora's in. Bonaventura's in. Lazal, um, who else? Leao and Rebic will come into the team as well so that we can save some players for the, that game against Liverpool. But hopefully we've uh, maintained the integrity of the squad in terms of how uh, good the players are and the quality of the team. And we can um, get uh, two wins out of two against Lazio. Oh, we're in a bit of trouble here. That's great. Counter-attacking. Correa strikes and he's through on goal and he scores 1-0. And that's a poor start for us. It was a great start last game when we scored within eight minutes. They've scored within six now. Angel Correa with the goal, I think it is. And we've got to be disappointed. They've picked up the space that we've vacated from being on the attack. And they've played through um, really well, quick and precise. And then Carrera, as he gets through one-on-one, -on -one, just levers it into the uh, far left-hand corner. It's a good finish from him. But again, we've just got to wake up defensively a little bit. And it's led us to being, surprisingly, 1-0 down after six minutes. It's Joaquin Carrera, by the way. Not Angel. My apologies. Oh, Lazar, that's lovely build up play. He'll whip it in. Leaoze, somehow he doesn't go in. He's only got to get the right contact on it. He gets contact on it, but somehow he can't just turn it in. I cannot believe he's missed that. Oh, lovely from Mandragora. Into the box. Leaoze, somehow again, he's had a brilliant opportunity twice now. The ball's still alive. Mandragora to go for a shot and it's blocked and Lazio will break away. Got to jockey him here. Decent defending. Can he hook it away? He can. And out we can play. Mandragora to Rebic. Leao needs to make the run on the inside and he doesn't. Come on. Straight out to Rebic. Mandragora. Back to him. Looks to play through to Liao. He spun his man well. And now he can make up for the chances he's missed. And he does. 1-1. One, one, 44 minutes gone. Milan equalise. Rafael Liao this time. No stopping that. He does well. Does really well indeed. The two easy chances he's had is bottled. But as soon as he gets something hard, it's a brilliant turn. Absolutely fantastic. Just leaves a defender for dead. And then he's through one-on-one. -on -one and he's just got to slot it past the keeper. He does. Sends it a bit higher in the end. But there's no stopping that. What a fantastic goal from Rafael Leao. Come on, midfielders are all standing there. Again. Oh, my word. F hate this game. So sh Can't do everything myself. I said this. It's literally last, last episode against Lazio. I kept saying. Can't do everything myself. Midfielders are all standing there. Run. See, so why, why is he so free? And then that as well. It's just so jammy. Oh, sort it out. Sort it out. Oh, Conti's done very well. Leo needs to get on his bike here. He does. Using his pace. He's faster than the defender, but he's faster than all his teammates as well. The runs are poor. One of the finally there. It's saved. He's got to finish. And Lazio have got away with it yet again. 
Comes into Chiesa. Good touch. Going to try and shift it through to Rebic, who's very slow to get there, actually. Rebic. He'll have to turn back. Oh, and I need options. Everyone's standing there. Everyone's just standing there. Come on. Someone drop off. For f sake. Oh, my word. F awful. Game engine can't handle anyone moving off the ball. They just can't process it. Gets my f nerves. Jesus. That's two episodes in a row I've come off the end of a Lazio game ranting and raging. Oh, it's so annoying. So disappointing. We had so many chances as well, to be fair. Uh, even despite my my ranting, we should have won like, I don't know, 5 1 or whatever. But there you go. Um, so, yeah, very disappointing. On to the Liverpool game, the less said about that, but oh, for f sake. So, here we go then. Liverpool at home. They come to the mighty San Siro in the first leg of the round of 16 of the Champions League. Incredibly tough tie, but we're ready to go. I'm, I'm well up for this, you know, I'm really feeling this. So, hopefully, they don't let me down like last game. Had a massive break. It's been about five weeks since I recorded that Lazio game. I know it. It will seem instant to you guys, but it's been ages since I've uh, you know continued recording of this. So here we go. I'm feeling pumped. I'm ready to go. So we're going to dive right into it. I'm actually going to do the tactics on the um, second screen as we sort out the kits here um, because I'm going to make a lot of changes. And um, I want to show you guys the system I believe teams should use in order to counteract Liverpool and to try and beat him. This is, if I'm setting up against Liverpool and I've got the personnel available to me in the side, this is how I'm setting up against Liverpool. So we're going to go for the 4-4-2. And we're going to keep that um, as it is. Um, and now, what we're going to do is, I think you want the big man, little man combination. You want to, you want to be on the counter attack. You want to be robust, very narrow in defence. Um, and then what you want to do is, uh, get a big man, little man combination going. So we're going to have Haaland as the uh, the big man. However, what we're going to have doing, we're going to have him drifting wide. I want him getting into those areas that have been vacated by the fullbacks. The likes of Alexander Arnold um, and also Robertson. They might have transferred on this, I'm not sure. Uh, but we want to get him drifting wide, left into those positions. And then the little man, or the faster man, in this case it will be in Yaki Williams, um, will actually uh, play off him because of that and then he'll utilize his pace to try and get in behind uh, whereas these guys you've got the 442 again you're two banks of four that's what we're relying on very much um, we're going to actually have van der Beek out wide because well other than the fact we're thinking of energy as well the likes of Chiesa tired and stuff I think van der Beek is best suited to it because um, you know he's got a high high work rate for one he's got lots of stamina so he can really play that role well uh, and I think he can be that workman like player on the side and we can have Calleon on the other side as well very very adapted to that system um, so yeah this is pretty much how we're going to go I think we could could go with that team uh, a lot of players are tired so just trying to watch out for that sort of thing um, other than that yeah so in terms of the tactics we're going to be um, in fact we're going to change this to drop back I think um, rather than pressure or do we go pressure on heavy touch now we'll set this to drop back um, we'll keep the depth in fact we'll make it a little bit lower go to four and we're going to have balanced and in terms of offensive width we'll uh, we'll raise that uh, and then we'll go with that so yeah this is what I say this is how I believe teams should set up against Liverpool if they've got the personnel so we'll see if it works I could end up getting battered 4-0 and um, you know I will completely lose all credibility but we'll see how it goes so here is kickoff Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're talking to you from one of the special venues in European football, the San Siro, here in the city of Milan. My name is Derek Ray. With me in the commentary box is Arsenal legend Lee Dixon. We've got action from the round of 16 in the Champions League to bring you. It's Milan taking on Liverpool. Well, down to the last 16 teams, Derek. The cream normally starts to rise to the top at this stage. Big teams will start to show their hands, but I'm sure there'll still be a few upsets.
Right, here we go then. I've just realised, guys, we're actually going to be playing against Lucas Paqueta. Of course, we sold him in the summer. Uh, not summer, the, the winter transfer window, actually. And uh, brought in a replacement. Van der Beek was really his replacement. Um, we sold him for a lot of money. So that's a, a bit of a storyline in itself. We'll see um, how he fits into the side. And we'll see how they're lining up as well. I've just noticed Ryan Kent is actually playing for them, which is uh, very interesting indeed. Big fan of Ryan Kent, personally. I think he's... I think he's a terrific player, lots of potential, and I think he's massively underrated. Um, so we'll see how he uh, sort of uh, calls into their, their plans. Looks like a lot of the others. Kim Pembe has actually signed for them. We can see there Virgil van Dijk. Um, who else we got? Robertson still there. Likes of Fabinho, Alex Oxlade Chamberlain. Let's have a look at the lineup now. Uh, we've got Alisson in goal, of course. Uh, prefer to look at it in terms of a, um, a lineup structure. Look on the bench, Yannick Carrasco signed from. So here we can have a look. Trent Alexander Arnold gone, but Hugo Almeida is there. Oh, Hugo, sorry. Fabinho, Paqueta, Oxo Chamberlain, then Kent Salah, Firmino. So very, uh, very standard. A couple of signings in there to improve the side, like the Kimpembe. So this should be a tough game. Without further ado, let's begin with kickoff. Look to find Salah. Hernandez one on one. That's good defending. He's coats well with the pressure there. Oh, no, no. Oh, shit. For sake. What am I doing? Oh, my word. Oh, is it him as well? It's him who scored, isn't it? Paqueta, I think. Fuck. That was so stupid of me. I can't believe he's done it. Couldn't do anything for us. Couldn't hit a barn door. Oh, that's poor. I'll take full responsibility for that. Too busy looking for a pass, not busy enough looking at what's around the keeper. And it's 1-0. Calleon. Oh, that's good passing play. Calabria's in here, and he's got options. He's going to lay it off to Inyaki Williams. Save. Can anyone get to the rebound? No, they can't. Liverpool are going to clear. It's back to Milan, though. Kessie. Calleon. He's going to look to whip it into Haaland. Peels away. Somehow he did. I don't know how the defender got rid of that, to be honest. Can he find Calleon? Yes, he can. Is he onside? Yes, he is. What a chance this is. Calleon to equalise. Nice finish. 1-1. AC Milan back into it. They commit men forward. It's something that we spoke about before the game. The fullbacks will commit and they'll leave space in behind. We wanted Haaland to take advantage of it. This time it's Cali on the winger who does so. And it's a good bit of interchange along with Inaki Williams. And as he goes through on goal, he puts his laces through it. But it's not got much pace on it. Thankfully, the placement is correct though. And Alisson can't do enough to get enough on it in order to keep it out. Jose Cali on with his third goal in the Champions League makes it 1-1. Game on yet again. Going to look for Inaki Williams. Can he get the return ball? Yes, he can. To whip it across. It's back into Williams. Oh, lays it off. Calleon. Oh, it's saved from Alisson. Away from Liverpool. Another great opportunity there. Over to Van der Beek. Can he get the touch off? No, he can't. Just need to get rid of it now. Oh, it's past stoppage time. The ref should have blown up for half time. Oh, my word. It's saved. It's away. Where's the half time whistle? Finally. Jesus. So it's a 1-1. Quite an entertaining game, actually. A couple of chances for both sides. Um, and, you know, there's a couple of things we could do better. We were talking about Haaland. He hasn't actually been drifting out wide at all. You know, we're looking for him to be that out ball. But he needs to come out wide more. We can take advantage of those spaces. At the moment, he's not really doing a lot. So we'll see how it goes. Ah, oh, Salah's turned him there. That was good interchange in Liverpool. We've got to watch the cutback. Going to whip it in. Calabria. What is he doing? Clear it. I didn't want him to slide. I wanted him to clear it. Ah, he's given away a penalty as a result. I pressed X just to clear the ball. You know, it's in space. No one's got possession. Why is he jumping in like that? Just clear. Oh, never mind. Speaking to a brick wall. Salah. Oh, he's gone the right way as well. He should have saved that Donnarumma. He's about six foot six, six foot five. He's got to save that. I've gone the right way. That's really disappointing. Two goals that could have been prevented. And we feel hard done by from this second one as well. Because not only did I not want him to slide, but also I've gone the right way. And I think Donnarumma's really got to be saving that. Um, considering his height and his prowess at saving 
uh, penalties as well. So that is disappointing. What is Haaland doing? He's been so sh**. Out to Inyaki Williams. Now can we hit them on the break? Inyaki Williams, he's got blistering pace. He needs some support though. He doesn't have a lot. The runs aren't great. That's a Calabria. Calabria is going to whip it in. Van der Beek's peeled off at the back post. What a ball that is. And what a goal. Milan back in it. 2-2 once again. With another equaliser. It's quick build at play. The runs were less than convincing. But we managed to break through. Calabria whips in another wonderful ball. And Van der Beek is on the end of it. It's a nice finish. Maybe well be his first goal. I can't remember if he scored in the games against Lazio or not. But I'll tell you what. Really well done. Calabria, lovely ball. Straight into her hands and it's a great finish. She's a kick in the end or bicycle kick, should I say. Um, and he gets on the end of it and it is 2-2. So despite the fact that Liverpool have two away goals, we are still very much in the tie. And you know what? It's time to make a substitution or two here. Um, because for one, Haaland has been absolutely awful. So we're going to uh, take him off and we're going to bring Rebic on. And hopefully we can... An impact in the game. We need to try and push for a winner here. He's got options out wide there. Minds him as well. Calleon. Oh, Inaki Williams has got his pace there. And again, the fullbacks are leaving it uh, space. Calleon back into him. Wants a run from Rebic. He's got it as well. Rebic. What a finish. 3 2. AC Milan comes off the bench and with his first touch. Gets a goal, super sub, anti Rebic. Great bit of movement, the build up plays nice. We exploit the space that Liverpool leave in behind their fullbacks yet again. And Callion, he gets it laid off to him from Inyaki Williams and he can feed through a pass. And Rebic on his weaker foot can just slot it past Allison, the on rushing Allison who just can't get to it in time. And I tell you what, we're well in this tie now. 3 2 it is to Milan. And uh, we've turned it around good and proper. And there it is, full time, 3-2. After the first leg, we put ourselves in a decent position to, uh, to you know, get a result. If we can just draw against Liverpool um, in the return leg at Anfield, then we will see ourselves through. Of course, we are going to go for the win. Nevertheless, you know, I don't go into game to draw them. But I tell you what, it's a great start for us. And that man, Anti Rebic, comes off the bench to rescue the game. Certainly made it hard for ourselves, although, like I say, um, you know, it was my mistake, clear and obvious on the first goal. And on the second goal, really unfortunate, you know, like as we went through it, I didn't want to slide tackle and, and he did go the right way for the penalty. But thankfully, we've shown our prowess. We've been clinical, five shots, five on target, and it puts us in a good position um, to move on to the next game. As you see, uh, our bitter rolls into Milan do lose to Barcelona at home in the first leg. So they've got it all to do going back to the uh, new camp. So that'll be very interesting to see how that one turns out as well. So if we take a look at the calendar now, I think it's fairly obvious what we'll be back for. We have the second leg of the semi-final against Lazio, the second leg of the round of 16 against Liverpool. We could fit in the Rook game against Roma as well, depending on how it goes. Got a couple of games to play in between then, and I'll decide whether or not we'll play uh, those ones in between the episode or if we shall um, you know, sim them in the episode. But I'll decide anyway, we've got the Bologna game in the middle as well. But that's certainly where we'll be coming back next, so be sure to tune into that episode when we uh, you know, settle both the scores in those uh, two games in the Coppa Italia and the Champions League. But if you made it through to the end, we are going to finish it off there. Thanks so much for watching. If you have done so, please be sure to leave a like on the video. Uh, just let me know you're enjoying it. Um, it's good to be back with this series, of course. We took a long break, but we are back and we're ready to finish off this season and hopefully try and go one better and win more trophies. Uh, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more regular gaming content um, and make sure to ring the bell as well so that you get notifications every time I upload a video. On that note, we're going to finish it off there. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, I shall see you soon. Come on.